How do you mix woodwinds, brass and percussion in a realistic orchestral mock-up? In this video I show you what plugins I use and how I use them. Hi there, this is David, also known as Ghost Rider. I am a Dutch media composer and on my channel you can listen to my music and watch videos about how to write orchestral music for film and video. So if you want to get better in that, in orchestration, in creating more realistic orchestral mock-ups, then start now by subscribing and clicking that little bell. Last week I talked about mixing strings and this week we are concentrating on the mixing of woodwinds, brass and percussion. So let's go back to our DAW, in my case Logic Pro X. So in this video we are concentrating on the light blue ones which are the woodwinds. We are concentrating on the yellow ones, the brass section. The brown ones which are the percussion and these two the more darker blue ones the piano and the harp so let's go to our mixing panel which you can see what kind of plugins i have used to mix these specific instrument families and for the woodwinds i haven't done much because the woodwinds already sound really really fantastic right out of the box and i will solo them in this section and i so you can listen to them. The woodwinds are the woodwinds from Spitfire Symphonic. An excellent library. And the only thing that I have done is added this plugin, the Fedevix plugin, which I have shown you last week, which I also have used for the strings. And the function of this plugin is to add that analog flavor, that warmth to your mix. And it is really subtle and it is almost not noticeable. But adding this plugin, these kind of plugins to all your tracks will have a much bigger effect, a more noticeable effect and it is a really really awesome plugin. So this is the only one that I have used for the woodwinds. Then continue with the brass because the brass is much more interesting in this mix and that are these yellow ones and let's solo them and I will we'll listen to the first part of the brass with all the plugins turned on. I will turn them off and let's listen to that section again. And turn it on. All right, there's a, there's a big difference, a big difference. What kind of plugins do I use on brass? Well, most of the time, two plugins. One of the plugins that I use for the brass is this one, it's the NLS. And I already showed this one last week because if you're not working in Logic Pro X, you don't have the FedFX plugin. And this is a similar plugin which gives that warmth analog flavor. And I really like this plugin with brass. Someone showed me once this plugin and I was very impressed by the effect the result of this plugin on brass. I always use it on the mic setting and the drive. You can play around with the drive and in this case for the trumpets I use a 8.7 and I will solo the trumpets. It is turned on right now and I will turn off the EQ of the, the reverb I'm sorry. This is with the NLS turned on. And let's listen to it again and I will flip it off. This is off. This is on. There's a major difference. This is much more, I would say it sounds much more realistic. So I use always this one, the NLS mic. And I also use that for the other trumpet section and I also use it for the horns. Let's listen to the horns with it. All right. All 
Right, this is turned on. Turned off. Turned on. Again, a major difference. Turned on. And turned off. It's so much better sounding when turned on. It has more body, more warmth. It sounds more realistic. All right. And I also use this plugin for the trombones and for the tuba. So these are my, this is one of my favorite plugins to use that analog flavor to brass, the NLS channel. You can buy it at Waves. I have put a link in the video description. And if you buy this plugin using that link, you will get a additional 10% discount. It's up to you if you want to use that. Another plugin that I used for mixing the brass is of course the reverb. And again, I used East West Spaces 2 for this one. And I have used the reverb on the trumpets and the horns with all different reverb settings because you want to position the instruments in a room with a unique reverb tail. Right? The trumpets, these are two trumpets and these are the same with a setting of minus 15 almost. And just like I showed you last week, I have cut away all the low frequencies out of the reverb around the 500 Hertz. For the horns, I use a different setting uh, for the reverb, less reverb. That's why it's uh, around minus 21. And again, I cut away some of the low frequencies in this reverb. And let's listen to it with the reverb off. Let's start with the reverb off and let's, let's listen to the horns. These are the horns without the reverb. And a little trick showed you with the strings, when you stop, it immediately stops. When you listen to it with the reverb on, then you know exactly what the audio till is caused by the reverb plugin. And that's this. I used this one, and that's the same plugin, that's my equalizer plugin for the trombones to add a little bit more around the 1500 Hertz to get a better sounding trombone. And let's listen to it with it on. And off. And on. Really subtle, just a subtle effect on the brass. And that are the plugins that I have used for mixing the brass. So NLS for adding that analog warmth flavor to create a more realistic sounding brass and a reverb East West Spaces in this case. And I did a little bit of EQing on the trombones. All right, let's continue with the percussion, the brown ones, these. And as you can see, I haven't used much plugins to mix the percussion in this track. Same plugins as you have seen before. The FedFX plugin to add that analog flavor, that warmth to some of the instruments, same settings. And for the timpani, I have used the NLS, this time mic setting and with a drive around 5.8. Eight. These are just subtle effects. But what is more interesting, I have used this one, this plugin, which is a reverb plugin, an algorithmic plugin, which is different, works different than the East West Spaces. And to be honest, I am really, really fond of this plugin. This is a beast of a plugin for reverb. And as you can see, the Celeste the xylophone and the uh, vibraphone use the same uh, settings for the reverb. So these are exactly the same. And the effect of it, and let's listen to it. Let's listen to the 
let's say the xylophone maybe that's a good one to demonstrate it this is with the reverb on it has a really small reverb channel this is with the reverb turned off and then it stops immediately okay then continue with the last two instruments of this music track the harp and the piano and again I've used the FedFX plugin the stock plugin from Logic Pro X to add that analog flavor and warmth I have used the same plugin the algorithmic plugin for the reverb and in this case really subtle differences and the difference between these two are mostly this one the time of the reverb chill and let's listen to the piano first all right and I will turn off the uh, rever reverb of the piano. With the reverb on. Reverb off. Reverb on. That's a major difference. This is a really, really big reverb trail on the piano to make it sit well in the mix. I also used this plugin. This is a new one. And this is a compressor from Waves, but it the effect is really, really, really subtle. And you can see how subtle it is by looking at the meter, cause that will show you how much the compression works and it's really 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 small it's only most of the time at the beginning of this track it's just it's just um, acting on a couple of hard notes from the piano then the harp let's listen to the harp I will make it a bit longer. All right, two plugins on the harp, the FedFX and the reverb. And let's turn the reverb off. Okay, let's listen to it again with the reverb on. And let's listen to the harp and the piano together. Let's turn the plugins off. With the fat of X on. And the reverb on. All right, so we're done with the mixing template. I've showed you the plugins and the settings that I have used to mix show opener. And in the video description, you will find a link to the mixing template, the updated project file, which you can download. And you will find in that document, all the settings that I have talked about in this video and in the former videos about mixing this uh, specific music track. But we're not really done yet. Next week I will be talking about how to get a little bit more objectivity in your mix. Did all the tiny adjustments that we have applied during mixing, did it actually make the track sounding better or not? That's an important thing that we need to know. And in the next video, next week, I will show you how I do that. So I will see you all next Thursday, 5 p.m. when the video goes live.